Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Jovita Christi and in this video, I'm going to show you the use of aggregate built-in functions in SQL and how to combine those with the group by having an order by clauses. So let's begin. Once again, the database being used in this table in this uh, video uh, contains uh, is has already been created in the previous videos. I have linked them down below so you can uh, make the database first and then come back to this video if you haven't done it yet. So the first question that uh, we are going to answer here is to find the average salaries of all employees. Now to find an average salary we are going to use an aggregate function. So aggregate functions are functions that return to you one value when you pass multiple values. So functions like average, sum, min, max, all these are aggregate functions. So we are going to find the average by writing select AVG from of uh, salary from employees. So AVG is the aggregate function called average. And put a semicolon, hit enter. It gives you average salary 52,500. And if you check the employees table, uh, these are the different salaries. So if you want to verify your answer, you can add all these salaries and divide by six and you'll get this um, average. Let's clear the screen and proceed to the next question. The next question says, find the minimum and maximum project revenue for all active projects that make money. So this is going to require the projects table and we need to find minimum and maximum revenue. So we'll write down select min revenue, comma max revenue. on projects. So max and min both are built-in functions in SQL. You can use them directly. The condition that, that is present here is that projects should be active. So projects being active means the stop date should not be there. If the stop date is null, then the projects are active. So I need to write a condition that the stop date is null. To compare null with any column, we do not write stop date equal to null. Instead, we write stop date is null or stop date is not null if you want to make sure it's not null. Now, this is the first condition. The second condition is that they should be making money, which means the revenue should not be zero. If the revenue is zero, the project is not making money. And so you'll write down that the revenue should be greater than zero semicolon and hit enter. Now these are the two values I'm getting. Minimum is 18,150, max is uh, 2,42,000. So to verify this, we can uh, find all the revenues from projects along with the stop date. And let's see it. Forgot to write the table, so from projects. You can see that um, the stop date not null is possible only for these three. And the revenue should be greater than zero, so you can eliminate first row. Eliminate second row because this is not an ongoing project. So we are left with these two. From here, the minimum is this one which we are getting here as minimum. And the maximum is 242,000, which we are getting here as maximum. So that's how you can combine aggregate functions with different conditions in the select statement. Let's move on to the next question, which says, find the number of employees who are assigned to some department. Let's clear the screen. Now here we are going to use the employees table once again. 
Now you can see here that all employees are given a depth code, which means they belong to that department or they are assigned to that department. But notice how this employee number six does not have any depth code, it is null, which means this employee is not assigned to any department. The question says we need to count those employees, count the number of those employees who are assigned to some department. So the number should be five. To do this, you need to count the depth code column from your employees table. So you'll write down select. Count is another aggregate function which counts the number of values which are not null. So select count depth code from, uh, from employees. And you can see it gives me a count five because it did not count the null value. Let's proceed to the next question. The next question says, for each department, list the department code and the number of employees in the department. Now, this is the question where you will be using the group by clause, and I'm going to explain it to you here. So let's first of all, um, uh, we can just keep this as it is. Now, what we want here is for each department, we want to show number of employees. What we showed previously was total employees having some department and that we got five. But now I want a result that says in admin, there is one employee. In AWCNT, there is one. In HDWRE, there is one. In CNSLT, there are two. That's the type of result I require. So in that case, I'm going to use the same um, same query, but I'll modify it. So in this this time, I'm going to count the employee ID instead of depth code. Count employee ID from a depth code from employees. And then we will add this thing called the group by clause. So in the group by clause, I'll write down depth code. What this will do is it will group the number of employees um, based on the depth code. So when you run it, you will get it like this. That admin has one, consulting has two, accounting one, hardware one, and then this one is null. If you don't want to see the null value, you can add a where clause here that says where depth code is not null. Now, always remember that whenever you want to add a where condition with the group by clause, you can only add it before the group by clause. So there is a, this is a rule in SQL that after select, you need to write where. So where depth code is not null. And then you can do the group by. So after select, there should be where. And you can see now the null depth code is gone and the others are present. So this is how um, you can use the group by clause in order to modify your um, result and get uh, and make use of aggregate functions better. Whenever there's an aggregate function, you can add an additional clause, which is the group by clause. Now let's see the next question. I'll just uh, clear the screen here. The next question says, for each department that has a project, list the department code and report average revenue and count of all of its projects. So in this case, we are going to use the projects table. And 
Here it says for each department that has a project, we need to list the department code. So we need to list out the debt code from here. And it also says to report average revenue. So we need to find, um, apply the average function on the revenue column. And we also need to count how many projects are there for this department. So I'm going to count the project ID column from projects. And it also says that you need to find this data for each department. You don't want this data. You don't want total average revenue for all projects. You want for each department. So we are going to apply the group by clause and write depth code and enter. And you can see this is the result. And there are three departments and all three, their average revenue is given and number of projects are given. To verify the data, I will show you the depth code and revenue and project ID from projects. And now you can see that in consulting there are two. So what you are getting here 130075 is the average of these two. And in admin there's only one with revenue zero, so average is going to be zero. In AWCNT there's one with 100,000, so the average is also going to be 100,000. Let's proceed to the next question that says modify the query from problem 22, which we just did, to only include departments with two or more projects. So let's clear the screen uh, or let's keep it and we can use up arrow key to get our previous um, previous query that we wrote. Now here I need to modify this to uh, display only those departments with projects, number of projects uh, two or more. So in that case, only consulting should be present in the result and everything else should not be present in the result. So here I'm going to write down after this, after calculating the uh, average and count, after that, I'm going to specify the group by clause as it was, but then I'm going to use a special clause called having clause, where I'm going to write having count project ID greater than or equal to two. And this is what I get only this uh, CNSLT because that's the only one having two or more projects. Now notice the use of having clause. I'm not using where because I want to apply the condition not on a column directly. I want to apply the condition on an aggregate function applied on the column. And that's why I can use the having clause. So whenever there's aggregate function, you can use a group by clause. And if you have a group by clause, you can also use a having clause. Now let's see the next question. This is the last question, which says, modify this to count only active projects and sort the results in descending order by count. Let's clear the screen. Now you need to modify the previous query to count only active projects. So this was the previous query where we found depth code, average revenue, number of projects. Now I want only active projects. So I need to add a condition that says where um, the number of uh, the active projects are projects which do not have a stop date, which means where stop date is not null, or rather stop date is null. So if the stop date is null, the project is active. So where stop date is null, and I still want to group it by depth code, and we still want 
the count of projects to be greater than or equal to two. And moreover, we want to sort this by this in descending order by count. So for that, we use the order by clause and I want to sort it by count of projects. So count project ID in descending order. So whenever you want descending order, you need to specify DESC. If you don't, then it will give it to you in ascending order as a default value. Once you've done this, put a semicolon, hit enter. Of course, the result is the same because um, this project is not uh, over. This is an active project. Both the C and SLT projects are active. And also, uh, there is no point in sorting since we have only one uh, row present here. If we had more rows, uh, we could have done the sorting. So that's how you can apply group by having an order by clauses to aggregate functions. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.